follow Steve on a solo journey into the San Juans in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado, this week on Backpacker Get Out More TV. Welcome back to Backpacker Get Out More TV. I am your host, Randy Propster, and I'm excited to bring you into our backyard. I say our meaning Backpacker Magazine, based in Boulder, Colorado, and this week we get to explore the beautiful Rocky Mountains just outside our doorstep. So excited to follow Steve on a solo journey this week. Jordan is still spending time with her family after the passing of Betty Meeks. Our condolences to the Meeks family once again. This time we're gonna follow Steve on the solo journey. Before we get too far, please hit that like button, hit subscribe, turn on the bell for notifications, share this video with someone who you care about, someone who you would like to inspire to get outside. We want to inform and inspire all of you with the hopes that you'll wanna spend time out exploring beautiful places like the Rocky Mountains. Also find the link in the description that will allow you to sign up for this week's gear giveaway. Each and every week we give away some amazing prizes to winners who sign up. All you have to do is click that link, sign up to win great prizes from Visit NC Smokies, Darn Tough, Jet Boil, Mystery Ranch, Lakey, Oboe's Footwear, Sawyer Products, Sea to Summit, and Yellowstone Select Kentucky Bourbon. Now, while we are going, going to explore our backyard, the Rocky Mountains, we want to get you started this week in the hometown of Stephen Jordan, Haywood County, North Carolina, the Smoky Mountain region of North Carolina, an absolutely fabulous playground because we want to invite you to join the family fair in Haywood County. Haywood County is just a great destination, particularly for the outdoorsmen. Hiking particularly, we have the Great Smokies National Park, Blue Ridge Parkway, lots of wonderful trails like the Appalachian Trail and Art Loeb Trail, Mounts to Sea Trail. But just a tremendous amount of, of day hikes as well. So beautiful, beautiful hiking in West North Carolina and Haywood County particularly. It's a wonderful place to bring your family and loved ones. Uh, there's a rich musical uh, culture in Western North Carolina. There's great food great lodging and where the Great Smoky Mountains meet the Blue Ridge right here. It's just one of the most peaceful, serene places in the world. It's a great place to spend some time. We're excited to get you out to our backyard here in Colorado, the Rocky Mountains. But before we do, we have to stop in to one of our neighbors to the north up in Fort Collins, Jack's Outdoor Gear. Fantastic outdoor store. They know everything there is to know about getting you outfitted for your Rocky Mountain adventures. We had a chance to talk with Jim Quinlan, shop owner who's going to tell you all about the store, and his associate Matt, who not only is going to share some of the abundant outdoor opportunities that the Rockies have to offer, but he's going to bring us up to speed on a forgotten feature. Important to remember mosquitoes can bite through some clothing layers and ticks can climb, so we need to make sure that. Her methrin is in your kit. Here's Jim and Matt now from Jack's Outdoor Gear. Hello, I'm Jim Quinlan. I'm president of Jack's Mercantile Company here in Fort Collins, Colorado. We're standing out by the pond in back of our store, our original store at uh, 1200 North College Avenue. And uh, this, uh, this store started out as a uh, selling government surplus back in 1955. Anyway, our company uh, over the years has grown now to nine stores. We're uh, mainly uh, along the Front Range, Colorado. We have a store in Cheyenne, also have one store back in Ames, Iowa. Uh, as business grew from selling uh, government surplus into selling uh, lighter weight camping gear, and then we have clothing, footwear, we got into fishing, hunting. Um, we actually now sell kitchenware, uh, along with other stores, we sell farm equipment, so we sell feed, uh, we like to say, you name it, we got it at Jack's. And uh, so if you're ever out in the Colorado vicinity, uh, please uh, make Jack's uh, a destination stop. We'd appreciate it. So if, even if you aren't in Colorado, we, you can visit us on the web at www.jacksgoods.com.
Hey, how's it going? I'm Matt. I'm a sales associate at Jack's Outdoor Gear in Fort Collins. And today we're going to be talking about Sawyer um, and more specifically some of their insect repellent and even more specifically the permethrin and why that's an awesome option. So if you've uh, been backpacking, but out in the backcountry much, you've probably seen Sawyer everywhere. You've seen their water filters. Um, insect repellent is another big thing for them. Um, a lot of their stuff you'll see with picaridin or permethrin, so not DEET, so it's not gonna be super caustic and smelly and tear up your plastics, uh, melt your dry bags. Uh, and then permethrin specifically is a really, really awesome option for insect repellent in that you can pre-treat um, fabrics, clothing especially, before you get out there in the woods and it's gonna hold that treatment through several washings at least. And so you know that for your whole trip, you're gonna be covered up and protected um, this is an awesome option in conjunction with wearing long sleeves, all those classic things we know to protect yourself from insect bites. And this just gives you another barrier. And so when you're out in those, you know, in the tropical jungle or the north woods in Canada, you know that uh, when you hear the mosquitoes whine, you're going to have another barrier between you and them. One other thing to keep in mind out there, it's not just mosquitoes and flying insects you got to worry about. It's ticks as you're walking along trail, as you're brushing up against the underbrush. Um, so having permethrin treated, even if you're wearing long socks and long pants, um, or high boots, ticks are gonna find a way onto your clothing and they're gonna try, unfortunately, to work themselves up. Um, so having permethrin will actually kill rather than repel ticks and that's gonna keep you from having an uncomfortable moment that night in the tent with a headlamp and a pair of tweezers. But if you want it to stick, take it outside, hold this bottle six to eight inches away, spray your clothing down nice and good, let it dry, that's gonna bond this chemically to the fabric and then you're gonna be protected for at least several machine washings and 42 days. From staying hydrated to staying bug free, Sawyer products have been a staple in my pack for years now. Today we're taking a look at Sawyer water filtration systems. Whether you choose to squeeze or let gravity do the work, staying hydrated is a key part of backpacking. And with their uh, lightweight design and ease of use, they've become my favorite pick for the backcountry. To learn more about these or any of Sawyer's products, head on over to Sawyer.com or visit the link in the description below. We're excited to get you out on trail into the Rocky Mountains, the San Juan Mountains of Colorado, where Steve takes a solo adventure full of switchbacks up over 13,000 feet, camp by the lake. Sounds like a great Rocky Mountain time to me. Let's get out and join Steve on trail. All right, hey everybody, I'm here with the squad. We're missing one, uh, it's just me today. It's gonna have a buddy come from Fort Collins, but it's pretty smoky here in Colorado. There's a lot of fires. Um, there's not even fires going on right now where I'm at in the San Juans, but the sky is pretty hazy. So what's the plan, puppies? We're gonna go about, I think it's a nine and a half mile loop. Uh, we're gonna sleep at some pretty beautiful alpine lakes. Um, maybe get up high if the sky's clear and see if we can catch some good views. But I've also loaded up the puppies' packs with some gifts today, so we're gonna be doing some trail magic from Darn Tough Socks to Sea to Summit Stuff Sacks. We've got some Sawyer goodies in there. Um, I think I even bought a couple extra Snickers bars because why not, right? <laughs> So I just made some friends at the trailhead. Yeah. They said they love Darn Tough so much and they gave me some tips on where to camp, so. <laughs> Thank you for so you. much. Absolutely. You're perfect. So Y'all enjoy. All right, hike so far has been pretty cool. It's a little smoky. Um, we've had a few little creek crossings and now I'm getting to see this waterfall that is what is feeding it. But yeah, the hills are still kind of silhouetted. Uh, I think we're getting a little bit higher up though. The trees are starting to thin out. Um, let's see what it's about. Check it out. Views everywhere. A little over a mile in. I think we're gonna zigzag up this trail, switch back up over that ridge, and uh, I'd be betting there'd be a lake up there.
All right, this is something I haven't told y'all about yet. <laughs> There's supposed to be a snowstorm uh, tomorrow, starting maybe even early in the morning. Um, so I might wake up early and get out. I gotta pick Jordan up at the airport in town. I don't wanna have to go down some you know, crazy roads uh, while it's snowing. When in Colorado, always drink extra water. Always wear sunscreen even if it's cloudy. And always be prepared for anything. It gets wild here. Just another super steep bit, kind of just past them pines on the lower horizon there. We'll hook it right. I think we'll be at a lake. But, whoo, it's been steep. All right, Sage. We started way down in there. Welcome to base camp. We're a uh, little ways back from the lakes. Um, some like sleeping areas were kind of crowded. I had a guy that shipped this spot he was leaving, so I got dibs. I think we are gonna go up that way see what's out there and then maybe uh come over this hill over here and go check out the island lake as well so not gonna lie climbing up here kick my butt it's pretty steep um and we are in colorado so there's you know we're at some pretty high elevation uh, and i was just in the desert so i'm sure i'm not fully acclimated yet even though i've been drinking lots of water and i slept up high last night trying to be responsible um but yeah i've got extra coffee so i'm gonna make a cup of coffee and I think I'm gonna go explore a little bit. Cheers, y'all. All right, after consulting the map, we're gonna go up there. See what that's about. This is pretty cool. Whew! Just dunked my hand in to fill up some water. Man, that water is cold. like the roof. Ooh. It used to be a building. It's seen some shit, I guess. Stuffs. It's seen some stuff. Some weather. Look at this fort. Check it out. Just about to... I just lost the sun and the smoke on the ridge over there, but... What a view. And I'm just like in love with this like red that you're getting in these hills over here. I know it's a GoPro, it's kind of wide, but oh, it's pretty. Come on, let's go. Pretty wild. All right, made it back to camp. Um, you know, I just came down pretty sweaty, pretty hot. So I'm gonna quickly put on some dry layers, um, change into some fresh, nice socks, and uh, get the jet boil going, and get a quick and easy uh, dehydrated meal. And I don't know. I'm hoping that like with this cold weather rolling in, maybe the smoke will drop and we can see some stars. Um, if not, I don't know. We'll see in the morning. All right, y'all, I want to show off one of my uh, favorite gifts I've been given uh, by Jet Boil, and that's their new 2020 silicone coffee press. Um, I've just kind of paired this whole flash and that setup, and we just kind of call this our, our coffee pot. Um, it's staying right there in the truck. It's the first thing we go for every morning. Uh, we've been talking to a lot of people that really like this setup too. It's not just something they bring camping. It's like it lives in the truck. It lives on the boat. Um, you know, you take it to tailgate or whatever you're doing. All right, and just a quick reminder, always start your, your jet boil before you put your pot on and make sure you got your water in there first. I got a cup in there. I'm just gonna make a quick cup. We got a big drive coming up, so that's kind of where this thing comes in handy. All right. Pulled water in a flash. <laughs> so the idea here, uh, just be you know careful. I always like to hold the side and I'm gonna 
peel this guy up. We always put our lid on too in a position to where like the steam's not gonna hit us when we reach for it. Um, but I'm gonna pour in some Hiker's Brew, about a cup's worth. Stuff's really nice and convenient for the back country. Pour some of that in there and let that sit for about three minutes. Uh, and then something that I like to do is the press comes with uh, this little uh, press attachment, if you will. I like to take that and just stir my coffee around, make sure that you know it's mixing in with that hot water and getting the most out of it. All right, once your three minutes is up, it's time to get your fix. Take the parts out of the bag. We're going to assemble this little press piece. Um, and then it kind of feeds in. Uh, what we like to do though is utilize the lid for it. And I'm just gonna stick this through the top of the lid. They've got a, a hole there conveniently for you. We're gonna feed this in here. And before I start, I wanna kinda show off this silicon element. And what happens is this silicone is a little wider than the actual diameter of the jet boil. So when you push down, it kind of pushes up and creates a seal. And what that's going to do is just make sure that no beans or any grounds are going to get in your coffee. We'll go ahead and put the lid on and then press down. The lid comes with a really awesome little attachment here with a little pouring area and a, a spout. When it's ready, grab your favorite cup and pour. Also, if you're that one guy that always forgets his cup, don't worry, Jet Bowl's got you covered. The piece that they come with on here that protects the flux ring acts as a cup, in case you forget yours. For most of us, coffee's a pretty essential part of our lives at a chilly morning or you know a big climb the day before and we need it even more. Um, I found that having a fresh cup of coffee or a really solid coffee in the backcountry makes all the difference. Um, you know and it's not really that big of a deal to add just over an extra ounce in terms of what you're cooking with into a coffee pot and press. One of my favorite aspects of backpacking is the fact that you're empowered with the ability to be self-sufficient and self-reliant, which can really build your confidence. But everything doesn't always go perfect out there on trail. So you need to be prepared with field repair equipment and you need to make sure you maintain your gear. Steve's gonna tell us more about it now in this week's Camp Comforts. Something we wanna make sure that you guys know and understand how to do before hitting the backcountry is know how to repair your air mat. Um, it's kind of crazy to think that, you know, we've been through 34 states, have backpacked all over, and we have yet to pop one of these suckers yet. The Cedar Summit pads are bomber. Um, that's probably like one of my most favorite parts about uh, my experience with them so far is I'm, I'm really rough on my pads. I will drag it out to the fire. I will fold it up and sit on it. Uh, but every once in a while, you know, you, you don't check. So sometimes there can be a thorn, a sharp stick, or even a jagged rock that you just didn't see when you put your tent down. You go and you put your body weight on it and maybe that thing goes through your pad. If it's a seat of summit, it might not. But just saying, you know, it, in case it did, uh, they give you this nice little bag which comes with some extra parts. We've got the valve uh, to keep air from coming out if you so happen to break it or lose it. Uh, and then they've got some circular pieces and a couple of square pieces. Something that's really important. Um, if you're losing air, you wake up in the morning, your butt's touching the ground, you wanna figure out where that is. But to get started, you wanna blow it up to max capacity. That way that air is really ripping through that hole and you can kinda figure out where it is. Uh, I like to put my ear kinda down it and kinda look around, see if I can uh, hear it. Uh, another good trick is if you get home, you know, 
add a couple little drops of dish soap to a water bowl, get it going and just pour some of that water, maybe even paint it on with a, a towel or a paintbrush and you'll see bubbles coming from the area where your, uh, your hole is. So once you found the hole, what I like to do is maybe mark it with a Sharpie or just make a mark somewhere nearby. Uh, and then I'm gonna deflate the pad totally. Uh, clean it real good and just make sure I got any dirt or grime off of there that is gonna inhibit my pad from you know, sticking forever. With it being flat too, we don't have to fight these curves uh, in the pad. We'll be able to get it in there a little bit smoother. Um, make sure after that you clean your pad that you let it dry um, before putting your adhesive on. Once it's dry, we're gonna put our pad on there. I like to put the center of the pad over the hole. Stick that on first with it deflated, and then I'm gonna start working my way outward from there. Something else that's important to remember is you wanna let this sit for at least 30 minutes, maybe take an hour or two, maybe overnight before you take it camping, just to be safe and make sure that that bond really is created and set before you try and blow it up again. But there's nothing like a little preventative maintenance. Keep these for, you know, the very oops moments, but you know, things you can do is take a little better care of these things when you get home. Um, don't roll it up the same way or don't keep it super tight in a compression sack. Uh, open these valves up, let them breathe. Uh, our moisture from our breath can get trapped inside pads and start breaking them down over the years. If you make your way out to Colorado, there are so many great retailers because there are so many great recreational opportunities, but we wanted to make sure to introduce you to the folks in Golden, just up the street from us in Boulder, Golden, Colorado, Bent Gate Mountaineering. John Weir and his team have been outfitting mountaineering expeditions in those mountains for a long, long time. So definitely the experts that you want to talk to. We're going to join John now to learn more both about the shop and a skill every backpacker should know, how to pick a proper campsite. Hi, we're here in Golden, Colorado at Bengate Mountaineering. Founded in 1994, we've been serving the Front Range community for over 25 years. We outfit everything from rock climbing, backcountry skiing, backpacking, and of course, mountaineering expeditions. The store was founded in 1994 across the street uh, where we grew and eventually moved over to this location. Uh, we've been a staple of the Golden community for over 25 years. One of the things you'll notice that's different about our store is the level of equipment that you'd find is a much higher quality than you find in your typical outdoor store. Uh, specializing in mountaineering equipment, and high-end skiing, climbing, and backpacking equipment, we really focus on having some of the best gear out there. One of the hardest skills in the wilderness is learning where to pick a campsite and how to maximize your enjoyment while minimizing your impact when you're in the wild. One of the most important things about camping in the wilderness is making sure that you travel and camp on durable surfaces. This includes setting up your tent on delicate vegetation like wildflowers and wetlands. You want to make sure at all times that you're camped at least 100 feet from any water sources and you cook away from your campsite. Make sure when you're picking out your campsite that you also look above you and watch out for dead limbs and trees. This could create a seriously hazard situation if any windstorms or hard weather came up. One of the most important things about minimizing your impact in the wild is making sure you're prepared with the right gear to camp in the weather situations you're at. Check your weather reports before you head out and make sure you have the right gear necessary. This will impact where you camp and how you choose your campsite. You can find us and follow us online at Bentgate Mountaineering uh, on our Instagram or our Facebook page. While we were in Golden, hanging out at Bent Gate Mountaineering, we had to pick John's brain for some more of his outdoor expertise, and he was able to bring us up to speed on some add-ons to Mystery Ranch backpacks that can serve as an instant upgrade. Oh. 
Founded in Bozeman, Montana, Mystery Ranch is widely known for having an innovative attachment system to a lot of their packs, great durability, and an amazing ability to carry heavy loads. One of the most unique things about Mystery Ranch is the wide assortment of attachments that you can get to really build out and customize your pack the way you want it to. Everything from binocular cases to attachments for water bottles and snacks, Mystery Ranch has a wide variety of innovative products that'll really allow you to customize your pack the way you want it to. One of the most innovative things about Mystery Ranch is their unique carry system, which is designed to carry heavy loads extremely well. They also are built out of extremely durable materials and have great craftsmanship and high attention to detail across their entire product line. Right here we have one of Mystery Ranch's larger packs called the Glacier. This pack is a great expedition pack and carries heavy loads extremely well because of their unique carry system that's designed to distribute weight evenly between your shoulders and your hips. Building on their experience from wildland firefighting, Mystery Ranch has really done a great job building a pack that's highly customizable and has tons of room for organization. The Glacier has two giant compartments in the brain, compartments up and down the ribs of the pack, and is built with an extra wide opening at the bottom for loading in sleeping bags and other large things that you would need to carry in your pack. Accessories like bear stray holders and attachments for the front of your pack really allow you to build out and customize your pack to suit your needs. Its quick attachment system is unique to Mystery Ranch and allows you to quickly add or remove the accessories that you want on your pack. One of our favorite attachments here is the Forager Box. This thing easily attaches right to your hip belt and is great for a wide variety of things like cameras, GPS, cell phone, and even trail snacks. Mystery Ranch is on a mission to make the world's best backpacks for a wide variety of outdoor enthusiasts. Built to be extremely configurable with a concentration on organization and accessibility. Plus, these bags are bomb-proof. They are purpose-built to assure not only usability, but durability. To learn more about Mystery Ranch backpacks, visit mysteryranch.com or check out the links in the description below. When Steve first set his plan, it was for an out and back. But sometimes, when you get a beautiful day in the Rocky Mountains, he can't get enough. So he turned that out and back into a loop. Let's join Steve for the rest of that loop now in the Rocky Mountains. All right, as you see, got camp just all about packed up. Uh, it was super hazy this morning, but it's starting to kind of break. I think it's that cold front from the snowstorm coming in. Um, but have a look around. Way, way clearer than yesterday. You can see some blue up there. Speak. Sit. Good boy. Lay down all the way. Good boy. Alright. Morning two. Check out these lakes. amazing. <laughs> All right, so I'm told that there's a loop. I can see one more lake and then follow a forest service road back to my truck. Uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> it's not on the map, but you know, that's how it is sometimes. So uh, we're leaving the lake. We're gonna climb up over one more uh, big pass and get a higher up basin. Here we go. Dear everyone, always take the long way back. Look how beautiful this is. Man. Blue skies over there, but it's getting pretty stormy looking behind me, so we're probably not gonna get to see the infamous blues of this lake. We need a little bit of sunshine for that, but I don't know. I know where it is now. I got to look at it. It's a really cool pass over here that I think leads to 
it's something worth checking out one of these days. All right, we're trying to race this storm. We've got the parking lot down below, way, way down there. The wind's really picking up, it's starting to get more gray. It's gonna be a gonna be a challenge, but I think we can do it. Made it back to where the uh, drainage comes down from the highest lake. And we are dropping back down into the trees. Another of my favorite Colorado specialty outdoor stores is to our south, down in Colorado Springs, Colorado, where you'll find Mountain Chalet. We had a chance to stop in and talk to Shane and Will. Shane's going to tell us more about the shop, and then Will's going to bring us up to speed on a way to dodge a pitfall when it comes to determining whether or not your shoes should be waterproofed or not. Uh, hi, my name is Shane Leva, and I'm the general manager of Mountain Chalet in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Um, and you were in the oldest mountaineering shop in Colorado. We're 52 years old, and we've been outfitting Colorado's backcountry since 1968. Um, our mission is to make sure that you have what you need when you get out there, whether it's backcountry skiing, rock climbing, ice climbing, Nordic skiing, whatever your peak that you're going for, um, we have the gear that you need here with us. I have a lot of people here that have been with us for over 15 years, um, and they have done stuff from being a guide uh, to rangers here in town at local parks, and then climbing literally all over the world. Um, so you're not just coming in, learning about product from us, you're actually getting real user experiences. Um, and that's one of the best things about us is we are a shop of users. Um, so I'm not just gonna sell you something because we carry it, I'm gonna sell it because it's the best thing that you can use that we think that uh, you can use in the backcountry that way. <laughs> so it's really easy to think that you know you always need that waterproof protection when you're out hiking. We're in Colorado. Um, it's really dry out here 90% of the time. If you're out with a good low cut or even a boot cut pair of footwear that is water resistant, uh, once that water gets inside the shoe it's really just gonna stick with you all day. If you pair a good vented vented pair of hiking shoes with some wool socks, they're gonna dry out much, much faster than a waterproof shoe would once it's full of water. Um, you're really gonna be carrying that water with you for the rest of the day, if not the next day as well. So to wrap it all up, it really, really depends on where you're going, how long you're gonna be there, what kind of trip it is that you're going on. Pairing either of these with wool socks is the best way to start and then just kind of gauge, do I need a waterproof shoe or not? Am I going to be in a really wet climate where it's going to take a long time for things to dry out? Or am I going to be in a dry climate where it's already going to dry out fast anyway? Um, all those things are things to consider whenever you're getting a good boot fit and getting footwear for your next adventure. Steve and Jordan are from North Carolina. I am too. I'm from Winston-Salem. Um, so one thing about hiking, especially on the East Coast where it gets really humid, your feet are sweating, you're carrying a heavy load. All of that moisture, the waterproof membrane that's inside of that shoe is really gonna want to fight that, keep that inside the boot with you, add a layer of leather on top of that as well, and things are gonna get even more kind of just muggy and humid inside that piece of footwear all day long. Going for something that's a little bit more vented might help to mitigate some of that. So if you're having an issue with blisters, if you're already trying wool socks that fit well, we know that the footwear itself is fitting well, see if they make a vented version of that footwear and that can cut down on that moisture, which will in turn cut down on blisters. If you'd like to find out more about our store, please check us out on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and then check out our website at www.mtnchalet.com. Obos Footwear. We plant a tree for every pair sold. One million and counting. <laughs> That's a lot of f***ing trees.
Once we got Will at the Mountain Chalet talking about footwear, we wanted him to continue on because we know that footwear is more than just shoes. It's the right combination of socks and shoes. So we had Will bring us up to speed on the specs, or just the specs, of the darn tough Kelso Micro Crew with light cushion. So for the specs on this sock, this is the Darn Tough Kelso. It's a light cushion micro crew cut. Um, you can find all those specs, like I was saying, on the back of the sock. This one in particular, just gonna read them off. It's 53% nylon, 44% merino wool, and 3% of that stretchy lycra. So wool in terms of a sock is honestly the best thing out there and the most important thing for actually fitting a boot to your foot and getting the best darn fit that you can. Um, so wool actually wicks moisture away from your foot at the vapor state. It's infinitely better than cotton in terms of preventing friction and moisture, which always causes blisters. So picking out a good fitting close to skin wool sock is always gonna be the best thing for you and always an important part of getting the best boot fit that you can. You can't take full advantage of hiking if you don't take good care of your feet and that's why we love Darn Tough socks so much. They offer a variety of colors and designs for men and women. They're super comfortable because they're made from merino wool blend that's also antimicrobial so they don't get funky. And best of all, the socks are so durable that Darn Tough offers a lifetime warranty. To learn more about Darn Tough socks, go to darntough.com or click the link in the description below. Once you get your sock and shoe choices dialed in, it's time to add some more comfort, some more confidence to your hiking and backpacking system. And a great pair of trekking poles can help you do just that. This week, Jordan had a chance to take a closer look at the variety of materials that come in Lecky trekking pole options so that she can help you choose the poles that are best for your next adventure. One of my favorite things about Lucky Trekking Poles is the variety of materials that they use in the construction of their poles. They have options out there for everyone, depending on what your preferences are, which is really important because not everybody's the same, so you can't really have just kind of one pole. It's important to have different material makeups, different structures of things, uh, so you really can find the exact right pole that is right for you. One of the things I really admire about Lucky is that they have a pole out there for everyone. As I'm sure you guys know, not everybody is the same, so you can't expect everyone to want the same things out of their trekking pole. And they have uh, options literally for anybody, depending on what your price range is, what your preferences are. They have seven different types of uh, makeups of their handles alone. So as you can see, the materials in these two are different, the shape of them is different, so it really is up to what your personal preference is. Uh, if you want to go to your local retailer and get your hands on different types of poles, see what feels the most comfortable to you. Um, I've also heard people say that depending on the weather that they're at, that, that affects what uh, type of material that they pr prefer on their pole. Um, there's also you know, the high-end carbon fiber poles, there's the option for aluminum poles. Um, carbon fiber obviously is a little bit lighter, but aluminum is a little bit more durable, so it just kind of depends preference there. They also have mixtures of the poles. Lucky offers three different options as far as how the poles fold. Uh, there's six different options as far as the construction of the poles that you can choose from, and as far as the grip goes, there's actually seven different grip options. And as you can see on these two, it's not just the material, it's actually the shape of the grips that are different as well. So you can go on their website and kind of filter through, see all the different options out there. You can also go into your local retailer and get your hands on the poles and see which one feels the most comfortable in your hand. Um, but ultimately, the options that they have out there for you is incredible. I've been super impressed with the versatility of their poles and really the ability to find what feels most comfortable to you. Trekking poles make a really big difference in your hiking experience. I was stubbornly against them when I first started hiking and then when I used them for the first time, it literally changed my hiking experience. It made me less in pain. Um, it made me walk faster. So super huge fan of the trekking poles and Lucky really does offer an option out there for everyone so that you can find the pole that feels most comfortable to you. Lucky trekking poles are a great addition to your pack to help with extra stability and help take the pressure off your knees and ankles. Lucky trekking poles come in a variety of lightweight materials and styles. The innovative handles are super comfortable, 
and they offer a unique adjustable strap system. Plus, they break down really easily to store in your pack when you're not using them. To learn more about the products from Lecky, head on over to lecky.com or click the link in the description below. In addition to spending a ton of time on trail, Steve and Jordan spend a ton of time traveling on the road as well with their companions, not only two great dogs in Sage and Kane, but the fifth one in the family, if you will, is Tina. Yeah, that's what they call their truck, a truck outfitted for all sorts of adventure. And Steve's gonna bring us up to speed now on some tips and tricks that help them be a little more comfortable out there on the road. All right, we've been getting lots of questions of uh, what's in this thing, how's living on the road. So we thought we'd do a little rundown of uh, how we built the truck to kind of work for us a little bit better. All right, we've got our uh, food and goods in here. And if I put my seat forward, um, there's coffee, spices, grinders, you know, our cooking ware. And then we've also got, um, you know, all kinds of little things, batteries, sauces, tools uh, in there. Come on around the other side. Basically got a closet. <laughs> With clothes, girl clothes, more girl clothes, and kind of like socks and underwear up here. And we shove our jackets, raincoats, and rain pants back here. Uh, under both of these, we have storage for our shoes, books, and some personal items. And then, I don't know, this is something that I've just been doing for a while, and it's really helpful when you're camping, is we, we stick our headlamps around our headrests. Um, that way, when you get out at night, you know, it's dark, you can know where it is every time. And in the middle, we've got our, like, day packs with some camera gear and, you know, the basics. Come on around here. So we've been sleeping in this Yakima Skyrise HD. We absolutely love it. Um, we always got a clothesline going on. I'm kind of hanging this out from our last trip. Uh, if you come up here, welcome to our humble abode. Uh, this is where we catch these if we're, uh, you know, car camping. Uh, we've got a little mattress here we'll bring our our seat of summit pads up sometimes um and i love that we can connect these two together that's kind of nice making one big blanket uh we ran a little bit of power up here and we really like these uh solar charged lamps oboes gave us throw them up here so we can read you know before we go to bed and every once in a while the dogs are lucky we bring them up here too Check out the back. So, back here we've got our cooking equipment. Really digging the Genesis. We've got a half gen back there. We'll connect if we're making a big feast. Um, keep our sets of bowls here. Um, a lot of our sporks and utensils in here. Uh, a couple of extra pots, pans, We've got a cast iron in there, our jet boils for coffee in the morning. And I keep that over here next to, so in here we've got our Ignic. It's a reusable propane tank. Uh, it fits about five of the green bottles in it. And it's only like five bucks to refill it. So help save the earth, get something that you can use over and over again. In there, we also keep a filter and a bag for just kind of like on the quick. You know, we we, we stop by a crate and need something. Um, we've got our bigger ones back there, but this is kind of handy just to have in here. And we roll that up in the filter. Uh, we've also got a water tank back here. We like to keep full. We've got dogs that like to drink a lot. And, you know, you always want to have water at camp. Um, got our camp basics in here. Pads, you know, accessories, some, some fishing equipment seats and whatnot uh, there's two more of those under here that we keep you know various other camping equipment in uh, maybe you know other season stuff or stuff we don't use as much in the back um, but this kind of half of the back of the truck is all for the dogs we've got 
pads under here. We've got dog pads. Um, we have a little pop-out fan that will clip onto the water tank for them if we're stopped and it's you know a little warm out. Um, I don't know if you can see back there or not, but we've got some Tupperwares that we're keeping some of our work gear in, um, our dog food, our packs, and then we've got our refrigerator and freezer. And this is uh, through a 12 volt fridge by Dometic. It's been awesome to us. Um, it's really nice to be able to just you know not have to run into town, make a big old meal out in the back country, and go to bed after getting off the trails. Uh, and then we've also wired in a 12 volt set up here with two USBs, uh, 12 volt for the fridge. And it's got a volt meter on it, which is really cool. I can tell when my batteries are getting low. That's all powered off of a dual battery system uh, going off the alternator. We've also ran a 600 watt inverter down here that we can plug in tools, laptops, if we wanna watch a movie up in the tent, uh, or if we need to charge batteries and stuff while we're sleeping. Last but not least, we've got this awning on here, and this awning is, um, I call it a bat wing, where they spin around and it'll cover the side, this side, and a little bit over there. So if it's raining, if we know we're staying put for a few days, or the sun's really brutal, we'll bring the awning out and find a little shelter. If you have any more questions about road tripping or our, our rig setup, uh, hit us up on the Get Out More page. Well folks, it's once again time to toast a fantastic adventure and Jordan's going to bring you a recipe that includes Yellowstone Select Kentucky Bourbon made in Limestone Branch Distillery. Limestone Branch very specifically named for a very specific reason. It's all about the right ingredients. Jordan's going to tell us about that now as she helps us prepare the whiskey fizz as we cheers another great episode of Backpacker Get Out More TV. All right, y'all, it's bourbon time. This week we've got the whiskey fizz for you. I really like this one because it's light and refreshing. It's really easy to make, and I'm a huge fan of anything that's a bubbly drink. So what you are gonna need ingredient-wise is you're gonna need your Yellowstone bourbon, of course. Um, we've had a lot of people ask what the picture on the label is. So it is actually the Lower Falls at Yellowstone National Park. So as you may know, the Yellowstone bourbon is named after our nation's first national park. And so the waterfall on the label is actually the Lower Falls at the park. Next thing you're gonna want is club soda. Simple syrup is the next one, which is basically just a fancy way of saying sugar water. And then the last thing is lemon juice. So let's get started. Right. As you can see, I've already got the ice in my glass. We're gonna start with about two ounces of the Yellowstone bourbon. Maybe a little bit more, depending on how your day's going. Next thing you're gonna want is about a half an ounce of simple syrup. I like my drinks a little bit sweeter, so I'm gonna squirt a little bit more in there. We're gonna do a dash of lemon juice. And then just top it off with about three ounces of club soda. Um, I'm probably gonna end up putting a little bit more in mine again because I really like bubbly drinks. So the good thing about being your own bartender is that you can make the drink exactly how you like it tasted. That's my job. <laughs> What do you think? Oh, yeah. Steve approved. Oh, all right. Mm -hmm. Yellowstone bourbon is handcrafted in the state of Kentucky. These small batch whiskeys are the work of seventh generation craftsmen, resulting in a unique taste perfect for the trail. Plus, a portion of every bottle sold goes to helping preserve our national parks. Cheers to that. To learn more about the products from Yellowstone Bourbon, head on over to limestonebranch.com or click the link in the description below. 
Thank you so much for joining us again on this episode of Backpacker Get Out More TV. Please come back and join us next week. We move down to New Mexico as the adventures continue, introducing you to some more great gear, some more great shops, and some more beautiful destinations. Come back and join us between now and then. Get outside, explore your world, be kind to one another. And we're gonna send you away now with Get Me Gone, another fantastic track from Haywood County, local superstars, Balsam Range. We'll see you next week on Backpacker Get Out More TV. Stumbling around in the pitch black dark, big old hole right through my heart, waiting on the first sweet sign of dawn. I never found any sacred ground in this godforsaken town. Won't you give me some light, good Lord, and get me gone? Get me gone like a shooting star, just as fast and just as far. Gone like the long lost love in a country song. Gone like whiskey, gone like rum, straight out of here like wind blown smoke. Won't you give me some light, good Lord, and get me gone? Country song Gone like whiskey, gone like rum Straight out of here like wind blown smoke Won't you give me some light, good lord